Roswell Flight Test Crew, here today to flight test the Voyager 5 from Wakara. To see the unboxing and setup, be sure to check out our previous video. And to keep up with the latest on drones, be sure to click subscribe. And if you are subscribed, don't you dare think about unsubscribing. You know what? Actually, subscribe your friends too. So the first thing you want to do before flight is compass calibration. It's actually pretty straightforward. You can do it without the app. Remove all metal objects from your person and stand back from metal objects and fences and cars. Next, power on the radio, then the aircraft. Then hold the sticks down into the center for five seconds. After that, you should see the aft red lights flash rapidly. Once the lights are flashing, pick up the aircraft and rotate counterclockwise until the blue lights flash. Then orient the aircraft nose down and rotate again in a circle until they'll stop flashing. Then you're all calibrated and ready to fly. So this aircraft has two flight modes, beginner or easy mode, and you can see us giving the aircraft full stick inputs on the right side of your screen. The second mode is called common or sport mode. And on the left-hand side of the screen, you see full stick inputs there. So you get a sense for how the aircraft handles differently in each mode. So in addition to these two fundamental flight modes, you've also got an intelligent orientation control mode, a follow me mode, and circle around a point of interest. And it's also worth noting that you can even disable the GPS receiver if you need to, but only do that if you're an experienced pilot, because the aircraft's gonna be pushed around by the wind at that point. So, you know, it flies kind of how it should, I suppose. It's not super quick, but it is super stable. In beginner mode, it responds quick enough, but slows your overall progress. So if you're going full stick forward, it kind of goes, but not as fast. In the normal mode, it kind of moves a little bit quicker, but seems to have some kind of a maximum rate at which it'll go, because it, you can see it tip over a little further than as you're flying straight and not moving the stick it'll tip back slightly to slow its uh, speed so that's some kind of governor so this aircraft you know not a speed even but it was designed for industrial inspection so it really it does that really well <laughs> it'll hold position dead on it just you can manipulate the camera you're doing this and waiting for it to do whatever you're doing as far as photography wise you can just just ignore what it's doing in the sky it just sits there perfectly still Basically no air movement right now, so I can't judge it against a high wind, but it's doing a really good job here in still air on the mountain. So in flying this aircraft, it's pretty spindly, so when you get it way out there, it's also symmetrical. You can't quite see where orientation is in, so if you're a competent pilot, you'll know which way it's facing. So we do have a collision avoidance system. It's infrared, and it appears to be effective at only about five feet from your target, so don't rely on this. So this drone is all about the camera and that 30 times optical zoom lens. It's capable of capturing 4K video and 12 megapixel stills. And while it's designed for public safety and industrial applications, it did occur to me you can use it to achieve some interesting artistic effects as well. Now I'll go ahead and give you an example of how long it takes for the camera to zoom in. It's about 12 seconds to go to full 30x magnification. Notice a couple of things as we're zooming in. First, the image drifts in and out of focus. However, it always gets back in focus as soon as you stop adjusting the zoom. One other thing to notice is we do see a little jello when we zoom in to full 30x magnification. Here's a still photograph we took at full 30x zoom, and you notice there's no jello visible here. So that's definitely good for those industrial applications like bridge inspection. So here's a view where I've flown the aircraft out about a thousand feet. And this is what we look like at full 30x zoom. And this is the image in 1x zoom taken from the exact same location. That gives you an idea of just how powerful this is. This really is a powerful tool. So the gimbal has two modes, follow mode and lock mode. In follow mode, the yaw of the camera matches the yaw of the aircraft, so it's always facing forward. And this little auxiliary joystick only controls the camera pitch. In lock mode, the camera maintains the same orientation and yaw, regardless of how the aircraft moves, and you can control both pitch and yaw using the little auxiliary joystick. If you're using high magnification settings, say between 20 and 30 times, you probably want to use lock mode, 
because aircraft yaw is very imprecise for controlling camera facing. You'll see it jerk and stutter when you try and adjust the direction the camera is pointing using aircraft yaw. And here's our gimbal torture test. So you can see the video coming off the aircraft, see how the aircraft's maneuvering, and a couple cameras giving you a view of the gimbal working. Here's our flight endurance test. We came down off the mountain for this one, so that temperature and atmospheric pressure wouldn't skew the results. And it's an impressive showing. The Voyager 5 comes closer to the manufacturer's claims than any other drone we've ever tested. So that was our look at the Voyager 5 from Wakara. To keep up with the latest on drones, be sure to click subscribe. Hope you're watching. See you next time. All right, fly safe.